With more and more niche disciplines within mountain biking, brands are eagerly trying to keep up and keep everyone happy. I mean, not only are there a load of bike companies to choose from, but with that comes an abundance of options when it comes to choosing the best bike for the job, which leads me to the free ride bike. Where does this unicorn of a bike fit into the lineup when talking about a bike that can handle the gnarliest and most rugged terrain? with some technical features thrown in there like drops and gaps. Oh yeah, and a bike that can still access this terrain too. It's not quite a full-blown downhill bike, nor is it something that we commonly think of as an enduro bike, yet it can do everything that those two bikes can do. With support from Propane, we're meeting up with two professional mountain bikers that ride the same bike, but with wildly different setups. We'll also cover the current state of the sport from their perspectives an attempt to answer the age old question of, is free ride dead? Our first guest today has been riding professional slope style and free ride for over 10 years, and he's competed in many Red Bull Rampages, the ultimate proving grounds for any free rider. He knows how to throw down and perform on some of the gnarliest terrain around and set his bike up for success when doing so. I mean, after all, he usually chucks in a couple of 360s and backflips in those rampage runs. Yo, Carson, hey. thank you so much. How's it going? For meeting up for some laps today. Of I'm course. good. Yeah. yeah, stoked to go ride some laps with you, hit some jumps. For sure. How's it been setting up the new spin drift? Yeah, it's been great. I built it right before I came up here to Whistler and uh, very similar to what I've been running the past few years. Uh, 200 mil fork in the front, 27.5 front and rear. and. Yeah, basically my suspension's just stiff and slow, and but yeah, been loving it, Sick. getting used to the new rig. So how have you set the bike up for here in Whistler Bike Park compared to where you ride at home in Bend? Yeah, I honestly haven't really changed much. Um, consistency is everything for me, and riding the same setup is uh, key for me. So at home, I have a training compound. I ride Mount Bachelor Bike Park a lot, and Oregon Coast I spend a lot of time at, so it's kind of just Keeping it the same, riding whatever I'm doing, keeps me comfortable on the bike. So whatever application I'm doing, like whether it's going to like fest event, riding big jumps or filming a project or rampage, it's kind of always the same for me. As long as I'm used to the bike, riding all sorts of different varying terrain or jumps, um, it's good for me. So I didn't change anything. I'm Perfect. just enjoying the, enjoying the laps here, yeah. Okay, well I've got some more questions for you and about the bike, but let's go do some laps, shall we? Let's do some laps. Sick. So Carson, I'm curious, I mean, those big lines and the huge sins that you're known for riding, why not just pick out a downhill bike? Why are you trying to adapt something that's a bit smaller for your style of riding? Yeah, I think just as the progression of bikes has gone, like all these smaller bikes with more of a progressive curve with the suspension platform and uh, shorter, shorter rear end, shorter chain stays, it's just better suited for tricks and features. It's like, it's mainly the suspension platform for me. Step down flips specifically and spinning drops, having a longer rear end and having the suspension linear and blowing through, it just doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And the spin drift is just that, you know, it's 180 in the rear, but when it's set up, like the way mine's set up, super stiff, it's all the bike you need for tricks. It's like kind of like a giant slope style bike, um, but just very comfortable. It's basically just for tricks. And then your bike, you've adapted it and put the, you know, the downhill fork on there. How does that kind of change your riding style or just enable you to do what you want to do? It's just mainly stability and like riding big mountain lines and raw stuff. It's just like, I just like the feeling of the stability of having a dual crown fork. All right, you've given us some awesome information about your bike, but what do you think of these modern day free ride bikes? Like, are we there yet? Have yeah. we arrived? <laughs> I feel like, my opinion is free ride bikes. It's like whatever you want to ride, really. Cause I grew up with Kurt Boris, and those whole things all ride, like ride it all, have fun. Um, so I feel like any bike you have is free ride, like whether it's a dirt jumper all the way up to a downhill bike. But I think now it's like getting beyond the point where it's like, it's not just like an enduro bike and a downhill bike. There's these specific bikes like the Spin Drift and a lot of other companies are making bikes that are a little more like bike park free ride specific. All right, Carson, I'm curious, in the past number of years, what do you think of the free ride genre now compared to what it was in the past with features and style and everything in between? 
yeah, I feel like the early days of my career, um, the way to do it was you competed in slope style and you rode big bikes. And it was like a balance of the both, you know? And now it's like free ride has turned into its own sport and there's guys coming into the sport. I think social media has a lot to do with it where they don't need that background of slope style to build up in the career. So it's changed. Yeah, I think the main thing for me, it's just a lot of creative riders is like the next generation that's coming up. It's like all they do is ride big bikes and like free ride is free ride now. It's like established as it's his own full niche and slope style almost is like they're splitting off into their own sports and like we can't do what they're doing and most of them can't do what we're like what we're doing. It's, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like two established things now. Big Mountain Freeride kind of spoke to me and that was like my path after my whole slope style career. I just felt like this is what I want to be doing and slow style and competition gave me that. Um, but now, yeah, yeah, there's so many so many kids coming up that are slaying it and they never have competed in their lives. And they're riding insanely good, like the Jackson Riddles, Brian McNulty's, Hayden Zablotny's, and you know, it's really cool to see because it's establishing itself and you know, free ride is definitely the most alive it's ever been. And uh, yeah, so it's exciting. And I love seeing all these kids coming up that are chomping out our heels and gonna take our jobs one day. And I, you know, I'm all about it and here for the support. and. It's awesome. Well, it's Brad. Well, they can thank you for kind of paving the way in that yeah, direction. Well, I'm in the middle. Yeah, you got to thank the McCalls and the Zinks and all them for really paving it. But you know, I'm I'm glad to have tasted the old old times, okay. and now we're in the new time. So yeah, I'm just grateful to be here. Before today, what I had thought of as a free ride bike was maybe a bit more dated than what Carson explained to us earlier. Now the high level of precision and success rate of riders in events like Red Bull Rampage and Proving Grounds, I imagine has to be in part due to advancements in bike technology, but also maybe just a bit more self-preservation. As recent as the late 90s and early 2000s, Riders like Brett Tippy, Wade Simmons, Carice Evans, even Cedric Gracia were literally blazing through new terrain and embracing that free ride lifestyle wholeheartedly. They left the single track behind and instead found and rode new terrain that us mere mortals would look at and think how, maybe even why. The problem back then was riders were trying to establish this new form of mountain biking, but with the same old equipment they used before. It did mostly work out and got us where we are now, but not without some trials and tribulations along the way. Those old bikes weren't exactly built with 20 foot hucks into loose terrain in mind. Now these free ride bikes that were ridden to the limits back in the day were essentially downhill bikes that were made to go uphill in some capacity. They had slightly less aggressive and slack head tube angles and if you were lucky, maybe a bit less than eight inches of travel like the World Cup downhill bikes of the time. Nowadays, riders don't have to make so many sacrifices when it comes to getting where they want to ride and then pushing themselves when they get there. Our next guest has somewhat mastered this process and has been riding free ride terrain for a long time now. He's even competed in a couple Red Bull Rampages himself. Now, even if it's a feature that's been around for a while, he'll find a new way to ride it while taking some calculated risks along the way. But I have to wonder, is this new style of riding still considered free ride? Okay, no more surprises. Let's introduce our next guest today, and that is none other than local Squamish ripper, Remy Mataye. How are you, Christina? So good. I'm stoked to ride some trails with you today and check out some of these famous features that you're so well known for. But I gotta wonder, how's it been setting up the new bike for what we're gonna ride? 
Yeah, really well. You know what? It's got the same proton suspension that propane is known for. And it's definitely longer and slacker, which is something that I wanted anyway. Mm -hmm. Just gonna give me some uh, extra confidence on uh, some of those features. So I'm excited. Sick. Well, let's go check them out. Let's do it. Remy, how would you say that your bike setup's different than someone like Carson Storch that we were just hanging out with, but he rides the same frame? Yeah, so my setup is actually fairly similar to what most people will ride, meaning that I build this bike so I can pedal it uphill. So I've got a 1x12 transmission, hydraulic post, single crown fork. So it does really look like an enduro bike, but obviously with the capability of a free ride bike. Now I noticed this bike has the option to switch the geometry settings around a little bit. What works best for you in these settings? Yeah, so here you got a flip chip. It's common to most propane bikes. And the idea is that you got a low and a high position depending on what wheel size you choose. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm choosing a mullet setup. So 27.5 rear, 29 front, just because I want to get as much clearance as possible between my butt and the rear tire when I go down like super steep features or just big impact and I need to absorb as much compression as possible with my legs. Also, it's more fun. Yeah, exactly. You got to have fun on the way uphill if you're going to go downhill and have a good time. Um, I mean, this terrain that you ride, like obviously a lot of slab stuff, you want the most kind of grip onto the rock, as you were saying, and then some pretty big compressions, whether you're, you know, sending it off of the rocks into like in and out Burger, and how do you set the bike up for that, but also so that it's not too stiff, you know, you want like a little bit of give there. Yeah, so like because of most of the terrain I do is like super steep, I actually run my fork a bit stiffer than the rear, oh. just so the bike doesn't dive as much. So I got a fair amount of like low speed and high speed compression just to keep that front like fairly high on those impacts. The back is obviously a bit stiffer than, you know, your normal setup. Um, just because I want that safety on really big impact. I don't want the bike to just bottom out and, uh, and just go through the travel without that, uh, that support that I need. So it is a bit safer. I got two volume spacer on my Topaz here. And yeah, so far it's been great. So let's see how it does today. Why this bike? I mean, you've got a garage full of bikes. Surely you could do the same stuff we're gonna do today, but on a slightly smaller, maybe even lighter bike. I mean, I've done that stuff before on my enduro bike, which is a Tai. And yeah, the bike is very capable. Some of that stuff here is very consequential. The impacts are huge. So having an extra 20 millimeter of travel does make a difference. The bike is longer, slacker. It's gonna give me a bit more stability definitely more confidence. Mm -hmm. It's gonna tolerate mistake a little bit better. The suspension have more support. So on those big impact, that's really important. And I think that's one of the big difference between a free ride bike and an enduro bike. Remy, being that the bike is a little bit longer, how do you find it maneuvering around this technical terrain? Yeah, that's a good question. It's definitely longer, which means more stable, which is something that's really important for a free ride bike because you're gonna take that bike on bike parks where the trails are faster, so you want that extra stability. But with that mullet setup, you can still move around the rear of the bike super easily. It's still really fun. The bike wants to manual, accelerate outside of the, the corner. You want to whip it around. And also the center of gravity of the bike is really low, which helps a lot with that. So yeah, bike stays uh, really fun despite being a bit longer. Remy, where would you like to see the free ride discipline head off in the next five, 10, 15 years? Like you're not going anywhere. You're still gonna be riding these lines, but what do you wanna see? Well, I want everybody else to uh, enjoy them like I do and uh, keep progressing. It's pretty crazy. Like three, four, five years ago, some of those lines, only one or two riders could do them. And now you got, you know, dozens of people doing them. Everybody is like really progressing. The skills are going up. The speed is going up, the control is going up, and everybody's pushing. You got new lines popping out everywhere. And uh, I think it's, it's really awesome. It's made me a better rider. It's really been pushing the sport. And uh, I don't think it's gonna slow down anytime soon. So pretty cool to watch.
According to these two living legends, free ride mountain biking is alive and well in 2024, and I couldn't agree more. The gear, terrain, and bikes in particular have come so far in the last 20 or so years, and we're living in the best era ever when it comes to having a solid bike that can handle any job thrown its way. Free ride isn't dead, and it's not going anywhere. I had a lot of fun chasing Carson and Remy around the local zones, and I hope you enjoyed today's video as well. If you did, then please subscribe to the channel for more mountain biking goodness.